Hello there, telecom fans. In this video, we're going to talk about power over Ethernet, also referred to as PoE. So this is a network cable. It's an RJ45, and it's got eight wires inside of it. Now, without power over Ethernet, all this cable does is deliver, transmit, and receive network signals. But with power over Ethernet, it can also carry 48 volts of DC power, which could run devices on the network which either are not conveniently located near a power outlet or that we simply don't want to be connected to a power outlet. Two common examples of that are uh, voice over IP telephones and uh, Wi-Fi access points. So if I take this wire right here and I have this phone right here which has no power connected to it, if I plug it into the phone, the power or the 48 volts DC that is needed to run this phone is supplied through this network cable. Now power over Ethernet is added to the network in one of two ways. It's either done by using an injector, so this right here, this little box right here, this adapter, that's an injector. What that does is it adds the 48 volts of power to the network cable. The other way it can happen is if you look over here where I've got my network switch, uh, they have switches that are PoE switches. The way you'll know is somewhere on the switch, usually on the front, you'll see the little initials PoE. So again, in order to get PoE on a network wire, it either needs to have to be coming from a PoE switch or a switch capable of power over Ethernet, or it comes from an injector. In this example, I have the injector right next to the instrument. Typically, you wouldn't do this. You'd have your injector back in the network room and you would put this in between the switch and the cable going out to the instrument. The reason you want to do that is because like with telephones you don't want the telephone to be reliant on a power plug which could be you know either knocked out by um, somebody accidentally kicking it or in the event of some kind of a power failure what they'll do sometimes is they'll they'll put uh, UPS's on or un uninterruptible power supplies on the switches so that they don't lose power. So what does this mean to you as either a telecom do-it-yourselfer or as a uh, telecom uh, technician? Well, it means you need to be aware that if you're working on PoE uh, wiring, that now instead of just the real low voltage network um, signals that are on there, now we've actually got 48 volts of DC power. Okay, so now we're talking about, you know, not deadly electricity, but electricity none nonetheless, and you need to be aware that you can... Well, let me back up. I don't want to make this sound too harsh. You can short it out. However, most good injectors and switches are somewhat tolerant of a direct short. But let me, let me give you an example of what this might look like. Let's take my voltmeter here. Set it up right there. I'm hoping you can, you can see the numbers here. And I'll put this on a range of 200 volts DC. Remember, it's DC power. The, the power over Ethernet is going to be riding... Uh, it's actually it's redundant. Um, it's on the blue pair and the brown pair. So either you can use, say, for instance, the blue, uh, you, you know, the the the, the blue white and uh, the brown white. Now, I don't know if you can see the numbers, but it just changed to 50. Or you can use the white blue and the white brown. Okay, so both the browns are negative, both the blues are positive. What this means to me as a technician is two things. One is I want to think twice before I just decide to cut a network wire. The second thing it does is it tells me how to helps me troubleshoot a problem. So if I have a situation where a voice over IP phone is not working, then I want to find out is there supposed to be power over Ethernet going to that phone. And what I can do is what I just did there, use the voltmeter. The other thing I can do is go back to the switch and make sure that the other end of the cable going to that device is plugged into a PoE enabled port. So that brings up one more point. Just because a switch is a PoE switch doesn't necessarily mean that PoE is enabled. PoE is turned on and off usually by a software setting inside the switch. So that's something to consider too. The other thing uh, to consider is that PoE ports sometimes do go bad where the, the actual network portion of the, of the switch port might work, but the, the, the PoE component of the switch can go bad. So that's something you'll have too. All right, so that's power over Ethernet. It's been around for about, oh, 10 or 12 years, and uh, it's very handy, but you just need to be aware of it if you're going to be working with it or if you're trying to troubleshoot devices that rely on it. 
Okay, thanks for watching.